This is the celebration of the 10th anniversary of the Robert H. Jackson Center. We'll be performing that celebration at the Anthony Hotel, commencing in about an hour. And among the dignitaries that will be here will be E. Barrett Prettyman, Jr., Jackson's last law clerk. Father Fuchs, who just arrived. He was Jackson's bodyguard at Nuremberg. We have Congressman Higgins, who will be coming here. Uh, among the variety of other folks who uh, about 300 strong celebrating. So I'm honored and thrilled that we can reflect back on 10 years. And also tonight will be sort of a passing of the torch, in this case the gavel. Uh, just Dan Lundin, uh, as you'll become the new chairman of the board, which is great for the institution. He gives a lot of gravitas to the position. Uh, he's very passionate about it. And I'll continue to be on as president, so I'm, I'm not really going anywhere. But uh, it's a great, great night of celebration, and the weather performed very well. And here we have Randy Peterson filming.
great celebration. I want you to look over here because we're going to go through a little anthology here. And, and I hope many of you had a chance to read the great articles in the Post Journal this Sunday, written by Jason Rodriguez, which a nice history. Jason, a nice history of, uh, of the Jackson Center and in particular of our friend Greg Peterson. It called him a source of influence. And I think earlier, uh, when many of the speakers got up here tonight, they talked about all the things that Greg had done and how much he meant to the community. And these, as you look over here, are just three of the groups that have known Greg as a source of influence. We probably also call him a stem winder and a backbone, to put it mildly. The Community Foundation, as an example, is one of the people that felt Greg's influence the most. As a board member, he spent 10 years from 84 to 94 with the Community Foundation. In the last five of those years, he was president. And I'm sorry that the statistics are a little low, but I, I will read them for you so you can understand what Greg helped do. Uh, I think if you asked him personally, if he was a spirit of influence for the Community Foundation, he'd deny it, he'd give everybody else credit, but statistics speak for themselves. The number of charitable funds went from 39 to 192 in 10 years. The total assets went from a million seven to 17 million four. And most importantly, the cumulative grants and scholarships went from 344,000 to 5 million nine. Many of you here can relate to how uh, Tom and I have something in common here, how we all became part of Greg Peterson's master plan. <laughs> I remember walking down the street, seeing Greg, and wondering what plan he had in mind for me that day. <laughs> and being greeted like this, hey, I was just thinking about you. <laughs> then the plan would unfold. Or, if you decided to go on the offensive by expressing some idea about XYZ organization in which you were both involved, you would hear, great idea, you're chairman. It's <laughs> part of the reason my wife and I left Jamestown, but... <laughs> this summer, uh, I spoke with Cindy Peters those experiences, and in most cases, shares them on YouTube. <laughs> For instance, uh, the Sandra Day O'Connor also Walter Cronkite, Hillary Clinton as well. When I spoke with him, and that he sometimes morphs into that individual. <laughs> now that's a little different side of Greg than I know. I don't know about you folks, but so I started to explore that a little bit. And if you'll bear with me, you take a look at this pose and you wonder what he's thinking. <laughs> well, <laughs> does he just admire, admire Larry King and the way he interviews? Or, Please. 
that to put him on YouTube. Yeah. Uh, I first met Greg Peterson exactly 10 years ago, coincidentally, and he was getting ready to open some kind of a center. I wasn't too sure about it. And he came to me for some advice about how to go about this disease. And uh, he said uh, he was basically a very shy person and did not enjoy speaking in public at all. <laughs> and uh, what should I do? So I said, well, uh, is the name of the game, Mr. Peterson, is, uh, is, is publicity. And, and, and even on a casual basis, you, you work it into the conversation. You bring up this person, Robert Jackson, in conversation. See? And he said, really? <laughs> I said, yes. And also think about putting up some brochures, <laughs> leaflets. And he said, really? I guess. And since you are a legal organization, think about inviting some prominent attorneys. He said, really? <laughs> prominent like Elliot
started, we were not a pluralistic society. Today we are. But back then, we were not a pluralistic society. I don't think there were many gay, lesbian, Mexican, Muslims on the Mayflower, but I could be wrong. <laughs> And he's half Greek, half Palestinian. <laughs> His name is Yasser Yubak. Look at her! 